Well, hello, everybody. This is Chris Wells, the Bass Chaplain, and we are having a plethora of problems. I am so glad that you've chosen to be with us today on the Bass Chaplain Fishing Podcast, where faith and fishing hook up. Now, I know that you've noticed that last week we didn't have a podcast. There's a very good reason for that. Uh, I had some, I was at the Bassmasters uh, Elite Series event in Wisconsin, and I had a medical emergency. I had to go to the hospital, was in the hospital for about three days. And unfortunately, we didn't get to do the podcast. And so I apologize for that. And tonight, we we're having a microphone malfunction. Even though I'm talking in the microphone, we're recording off the computer. So it's not going to sound as good this week. But we are going to press on. And I'll tell you why we're going to press on. Because it is almost Labor Day. And Labor Day is always a very special day for me. Because for the last 30 years of my life, I have gone probably more than 30 years. Uh, it is the opening day of dove season. We're not going to do any fishing talk tonight, but we're going to talk about dove hunting and how to get better in your shooting. And we're going to talk all things shooting. And tonight I have as my guest, my buddy, Tim Smith, who is a pastor now, but was a professional waterfowl guide for about five years in Kentucky. One of the best shots I've ever seen. And then we're going to bring back the turkey guy, Mark Prudham, who happens to know a little bit of something about shooting doves as well. So this is going to be the Bass Chaplain shooting the bird episode is what we're going to call this one. So it's going to be great. But let me tell you about uh, every Labor Day for the last 30 years, uh, I have met with uh, my father-in-law and a group of guys and girls that, that meet together down in Winsboro, South Carolina, and we have just a great day. It's a big Southern tradition big tradition in South Carolina to hunt doves on on Labor Day um, but this is how it goes we're going to meet about 12 and everybody eats and then we we get the faith part in it we always have a time of devotional and this year I have been asked to do the devotional at the Phillips dove shoot down in Winsboro South Carolina and uh, what we always talk about is how important it is for each and every person on this planet to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ now, dove hunting is awesome fun. Bass fishing is awesome fun. But let me tell you, the only thing that really matters in this life is what we do with Jesus. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He didn't say I was a way, a truth, and a life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so every Labor Day, we get together, have a little lunch, and we, we all get together for devotion time, and we all call out to the way, the truth, and the life, the living Lord, Jesus Christ. And uh, he is Lord of Mark Prudham's life. He is Lord of Tim Smith's life. And today, we're going to tell you about how to be a better dove shooter and all about dove hunting today on the Bass Chaplain Fishing Podcast, where faith and fishing hook up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bass Chaplain Fishing Podcast. This has been an exercise in, I, I don't even know how to say it. We, we've never done this before. I've never recorded with just the uh, computer audio. So we're going to just see how this goes. But I have two very good friends of mine in the world today. Now, you recognize one of these guys. One of these guys is Mark Prudham. And you know him as the turkey guy from back in episode. I can't remember what episode it was, but uh, it was a very popular episode. And, and Mark has won every championship in the whole planet about turkey <laughs> hunting but we're not talking turkey today and my other buddy right over here tim smith from Cadiz, kentucky and the reason i have welcome tim but i the reason i have both of these guys on here today is because two of the best shooters that i know two of the best shooters and it doesn't matter whether it's bow doesn't matter whether it's rifle or today we're talking shotgun Welcome, you guys. Y'all are in my life. You're the two best shooters. So, congratulations! Wow, <laughs> cool. You, you, I don't know how many people you know that shoot, but I, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, well, you I seem to shoot lately. 
<laughs> well, I, tell, I tell you what, you know, both of you guys have put up with me for a lot of years in my life, and I really appreciate that. Mark got the uh, early years of me, uh, you know, when I was in college and when I was a youth pastor in Georgetown, South Carolina. And then Tim got me later. I went to a, a wild game banquet, did did a wild game banquet at his church and uh, been back to his church for years and years. But we just, you know, hit it off. And so I go hunting there over to his house. I just instead of doing like a, a lodge for hunting, I just go to Tim Smith's house. I just go over there. Yeah. And just walk <laughs> He's one of the only houses I know. I just walk. I don't even knock. I just walk in the door and go back. Exactly. To the time to do that. But guys, we got dove season coming up. Now, I know that both of you guys. You don't, y'all aren't primarily dove hunters. I know that's not a big thing in your life, but it hasn't always been that way. You guys kind of started off and kind of honing your skills like we all did, you know, you know, fishing doves. Now, Mark, we, we know you as, you know, the, the expert turkey guy, and you've killed one or two deer in your life as well, but you're also a waterfowl guy. So you manage, you know, a, a, a plantation for waterfowl. You've been doing that your whole life. Tim has been a, uh, a waterfowl guide, professional guide uh, for about five years in his life and a uh, you know, goose caller and, and all over the place. So we're going to kind of, I'm going to kind of pick you guys brain today about, you know, what can we do to, to, to be better shooters? But before we do, just t- tell me a little about your, your, your shooting history and, uh, and Tim, we'll let you go first. And that way Mark can be thinking about that. But the, uh, all right. You know, just tell us about how you got started and, and then you, you know what, what you well got. it's pretty easy uh my house daddy was a quail hunter so i had to learn how to shoot something flying when i said if i want to go hunting it was in the air it was going to be in the air and then my granddaddy was a rabbit hunter and so uh we had always was just oh that's all we did i didn't deer hunt didn't, didn't do nothing else just quail and rabbits is all we did for you for a long time so then i started off squirrel hunting but of course dad was with me and uh so that got my aim down uh, where I learned how to shoot off the barrel and more or less not off the sight as much. And uh, that helped me. So when I went quail hunting or went bird hunting, I was able to easily pick up on a bird that's flying. And so that, I, my, my main start was just with that. The one following along with him at first with my BB gun, <laughs> you know, and uh, chasing down, trying to shoot. I, I every now and then thought I killed a quail. Uh, with that BB gun, you know what I mean? I think Dad let me let me think that too. <laughs> How about it, Mark? What was your shooting? How'd you start? How'd you get started shooting? Oh man, I I guess I started following my dad around when I could walk and uh, and squirrel hunting. Is how I got to start, which I think squirrel hunting is the basis for all hunting. If you ask me, it teaches yeah. you how to walk quiet, be still shoot i mean them squirrels running through a treetop is pretty hard to hit too so uh it's a it, it's a good good way to start and then i actually started after that shooting ducks and uh didn't shoot as many doves until i don't know i was probably 10 or 12 years old before i started shooting doves but um i enjoy i enjoy shooting everything i just like to shoot yeah i got you yeah uh, so I, I grew up dove hunting as well, but I'm still not any good. And so but Tim, something you just touched on, shooting on the barrel versus shooting on the, you know, shooting on the site. Tell us, talk, talk about that a little bit. You know, I just used it to block out stuff. That's what dad said. He said, if you, you throw it up there and, and you got him, uh, you, you can't see him this time shooting usually. And uh, yeah, that's usually when they was real close. And uh, I could I could block them out of that barrel. And uh, I'm looking down the barrel, and uh, instead of trying to really get aimed down like I do if I'm bow, shooting a bow or shooting a rifle, uh, trying to get across the I'm more open because I got a bigger pattern out here with a shotgun than I do with any of those other things. And so, and I was lucky we had open barrels that would shoot a big pattern. And so uh, we were. When I looked down at the barrel, I was actually just blacking out the bird. And once he disappeared, I usually that's when I pulled the trigger on him. Or I'd come up under him if he's flying away from me. And uh, to pick him up. Right there, I've been aiming at him. I've been aiming at yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> on him. So right there, right there, I've and every, everybody's not that way. Some people shoot off of that. Uh, off what, the what do you do, I, what, What's your deal? Do you shoot the do you shoot, you know, do you aim at him or do you are you just you know looking down the barrel? No, I think. <clears throat> I think after a while you get to where 
the shotgun shoots where you're looking. When, when you get to a point that you shoot enough, you're actually uh, looking at the target and the bird, the bird will fall. I mean, it's, uh, it's not that simple because I missed a lot. But if, you, if you're aiming, you're probably missing. If you shoot more instinctively where you're looking with both eyes open at the target, your, your eyes will, the gun will follow your eyes. And uh, you, you'll have to learn, of course, lead. The farther the bird is, the, the more lead, the faster he's going, the more lead. Uh, all that kind of comes over time. And that's through experience um, where you kind of read the bird and shooting a lot of sporting clays and stuff like that will, will help that a good bit. So both of you guys keep your eyes, both eyes open. So yeah, I'm always, I'm always time. like a, you know, like a rifle. So that's a, you know, that, that's good stuff right there. So when you're, um, you know, when you talk about where your eyes go, you know, you follow, I, I hear bass fishermen talk about that a lot, you know, like, you know, Gerald Swindle says, you, you don't, you don't look at the, you don't look at the end of your rod. You look at where you want to throw it and then it goes mm -hmm. where you want to throw it. So that eye yeah. coordination also uh, transfers over into, in, into shooting as well. And so now, now you guys are, are, are interesting to me because um, now, now, Tim, you got a, you know, mostly a waterfowl. You, you, you were a, mm -hmm. you were a guy uh, yeah. for years. I mean, with some pretty, pretty high minded guys. I mean, guys that, you know, guys that, that really are, are, are pretty big in the industry. I know that, that both of you guys are friends with Harold Knight. And, uh, and, and all those guys, but tell us a little bit about your waterfowl, you know, guy, and, and how that helped you, you know, in, in, in your shooting. Oh, when I was, uh, of course, I, you know, I, I come out of the, with the bird hunting and then, of course, doves as well. But like Mark said, shooting clay pigeons was the best thing in the world we ever did. Uh, but then that carried over into my, my buddies. Uh, one of my best friends was a guide in the bottoms and he wanted me to go with him. And I started going down there and we learned how to, mouth call which nobody a lot of people didn't do and so we started calling these geese well that got me into there and then once we got into it we started man our waterfowl became fun what was nobody else in my family doing that uh, at the time but my me and me and my buddy there and uh i started duck hunting and i loved it now we was i'm from ballard county and, and i mean that was the goose capital of the world at first uh, but then we got into duck hunting and I really liked duck hunting. That was more like dove and quail, and they were quick, they were fast. And but then I picked up on I was using my quail gun to go duck hunting back then. Now this is pre steel shot, okay? This is still when you could shoot lead, and uh, so that made a, a world of difference uh, back in that day. But uh, but well, I had a ball with it. But I like what Mark was talking about keeping those eyes open. Uh, I was in North Dakota with my oldest son right after he got out of AIT. I carried him up for a duck hunting, and we got to, it was the first time, Mark, you might have not seen this before, but it was the first time I ever really seen the whole water shot in the air, and I could see it three times, and every time I get, I kept getting closer to the duck, and the sun was shining just right on that steel that I could see it, and uh, I learned, I'm still today learning about shooting, uh, and that was an experience we had several few years, just a few years back. Uh, that taught me about leading ducks too, because I was not getting far enough out. I was trying to get them too close. I was trying to get too close to the duck, and I really needed my shot further out. But I could actually see it. And if you've ever been able to see your shot fly, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Pretty neat. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, everybody, you know, when I go to the dove field on Saturday. Of course, you know, I mentioned this in the open that, you know, we'll have a devotion time and we'll have a, you know, it's like a, a little dinner time and everybody kind of get together and, you know, we, we make it about faith as, as much as it is about anything. Amen else. to that. But um, everybody has a different opinion about what kind of gun to use, you know, now I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm of the opinion of, hey, big, big shotgun, the big shotgun I can have, the you know, better deal, but Mark, you. You, you you kind of go the other way, don't you? You kind of what, what what is your what is your mm -hmm. favorite gun to shoot? Well, I mean, I, I just really enjoyed the challenge of shooting smaller guns, and um, of course, I shoot old guns. About everything I shoot is a double barrel side by side, and uh, I 
I just really enjoy shooting small gauge. Um, you know, it's plenty gun for doves or, or anything like that, but uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's, it's like, you know, Tim, uh, I, I heard Tim talking about um, he shoots a longbow and recurve and stuff like that. I do too. And it's kind of like the same thing. I, I just kind of enjoy that. And it's just a challenge for myself. Um, and it's just something that I enjoy doing. But so you shoot does with a 410 sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I love to shoot my 410. Um, and it does fine. And, and that'll tell you, you know, whether you're on or not. Um, yeah. Because you got a lot less shot. Mm -hmm. So you, you really got to be, you got to be on. And uh, but now I can miss them with a 410, or I can miss them with a 12 gauge as good as I can a 14. <laughs> yeah, golly, yeah, I, yeah. I tried to. I, I all you guys were talking about that, you know, one year, and I got out there with my 410, and it was just an expensive lesson that I don't need to be shooting. <laughs> the only thing that How come 410 shells <laughs> cost more than 12 gauge shells? Ain't that the truth? That doesn't make sense, <laughs> that that makes sense, sense to me. Why, why is that? Why is that? You think that the 12 gauge? Oh, way more expensive than yeah me. but i've got a, i've got a sweet little 14 i just can't hit anything with it but my my dad was pretty good but hey so if our listeners want to get better and they're just sitting around and they're going you know what i tuned in today because i want to know how to shoot birds better what's the deal and that's hey by the way that's the title of today's episode is shooting the bird with the bass chaplain but anyway um we're gonna um <laughs> But what what do you guys if you guys got got some tips about you know how how to be a better shooter if if our listeners are there and they're saying hey you know um, I want to get better I, I want to I don't want to be the laughing stock of my dove field this year uh, what what are some just some tips that that you can tell maybe younger younger people or even older people uh, what they can do to get better and I'll let whoever wants to go first go first neither one of you first go ahead Tim. <laughs> Uh, I would say uh, I know it's hard to do nowadays because that's what Mark told me at the price, but shooting a lot more shells than you usually shoot. Uh, I found that the more I shot, the better I got. And the same way with shooting airs or shooting any, it don't matter. Uh, I, I've shot a 20 gauge my whole life. I still use my same 20 gauge my dad got me when I was 14. And, uh, but I still use that 20 gauge and I still need to shoot that 20 gauge because when I went to North Dakota, it had been almost 15, 20 years since I went duck hunting and then went again. Uh, I like, I, I shot a box of shells, Mark, before I ever killed anything. I told, I told my oldest when I said, man, I, I should have shot something before I left. And that's one thing I always, we, we did a lot when I was growing up. We shot clay pigeons out behind daddy's house over at now my wife's house. Uh, when we were dating, uh, we was out there in the field just throwing pigeons up or, or clay targets up and shooting. And that made us a lot better. We even got to the point, and Mark, you probably did this too. We just take empty holes and throw them up there and see if we can hit one, you know. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and, but but they, today it, it's kind of hard because them tails is a little high. But that yeah. would be my best thing is tell people shoot more and shoot shoot a lot. Get used to that gun. Yeah, yeah I, I think the very first thing that that you need to do, and I agree with Tim one hundred percent. The more you can shoot. The better you're gonna get. The more practice you got, the the better you're gonna be. But one thing that I see a lot of, and I'm guilty of it too, because I got a bunch of different guns and I like to shoot different guns. But the gun needs to fit you. You need oh, a yeah. gun that you shoot well. And um, sometimes a gun doesn't fit somebody. And I see kids all the time, you know. And I did it growing up. You know, when I was a a little fella, you know, my dad shot a 12 gauge and my goal was to shoot a 12 gauge. And I had a gun, the stock was too long, the barrel was too long, it was too heavy. I couldn't hit anything with it. Yeah. So now I'm going the other way and I'm going smaller. But the thing is, is the gun's got to fit. If, if you can't put the gun up and you can't hit anything with it, then it doesn't matter how much you shoot, it's just not going to work. And then when, you, but you got to have, your gun's got to be right to start with. And that's the number one thing I see people a lot of times, um, you know, I got short arms. So, you know, most of the time I got to make sure my stock is, is the right length, length to pull. 
and uh, the, just making sure the gun fits. That's the main thing. If you get a gun that fits you well, it'll it'll be automatic. It'll shoot mm-hmm. where you're looking, and that's that's really important. And like you're talking about with the 20 gauge, you shoot your mm-hmm. whole life. You know, I've got a couple guns that I've shot for years and years and years. And you know, if I had to, if I had to put meat in the freezer, that's what I would take. Yeah. And that, that makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Wow. So w- let's talk about shotgun shells for a minute. And um, and Tim, you know, you alluded to this. Uh, about the time steel shot came out is when I quit duck hunting. <laughs> I quit. I just said I'm done. I'm, I'm done too. I'm I'm over. Mm-hmm. But, Mark, you mm-hmm. still, you, you're still, <laughs> you still. Uh, yeah, I got, I have to go. Yeah, you have to go. So that's it. But let's talk about, let, let's talk about the, you know, size shells. Um, you know, what, what, what's your, what, what do you look for in a shell? And I know, Mark, you're a big reloader and, and Tim, your, your sons are big reloaders. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, what, what are you looking for? I mean, what, what size shell? I mean, I go into, you know, I walk into Cabela's tomorrow and I got to buy some shells. Um, do I want seven and a half? Do I want eight? Do I want six? What, what do I want for, a, a, you know, to, to, to be more successful in the dove field? What you guys think? Hello, Mark. <laughs> I think, I, I mean, if you're going to shoot doves, I like number eight. And uh, you got a few more shot, a few more pellets in number eight. But a lot of times people um, – you know, they tend to they tend to want the biggest, hardest hitting shell that they can find. You don't need it. A lot of what I shoot, or like I said, I shoot those old guns and I have to shoot low pressure shells mm-hmm. in those guns. So I started shooting more like one ounce loads and you know, low, low speed, like 1100, 1150. You know, everybody wants a, a shell that shoots 1,300 feet per second and throwing an ounce and an eighth, and that's good. And there's times when you might need that. But I think consistency in your shells. I think if, you, if you've got four different boxes of shells and one shooting 1,100 and one shooting 12 and one shooting 13, I think you're chasing something that you might not ever get used to. Your, your lead's going to change from shell to shell all that kind of stuff. And that I just think that it's important that you be consistent with the shell that you shoot and that that'll make you more consistent. You just, you just described my, my shell box to a T that I, I mean, it, there might be one that's big old shit. Might be one, I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. It's all over. It's <laughs> kind of like when I started bass fishing, I didn't, all my rods were, I called them Heinz 57 rods. I had every kind of brand, every kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Or whatever and, and that's the way my shell you know boxes look you know and so man i tell you i'm under conviction right now i really am i'm, just, <laughs> I'm under dove hunting condition i'm first of all i close my eyes i do everything wrong <laughs> you do everything eyes, wrong Chris. Everything. So, <laughs> we have figured out a lot of my uh, today well folks let me tell you uh, both of these guys are men of faith and uh, and i've seen you know i've seen their lives and uh, and we love we love hunting and we love fishing and we love the outdoors, uh, but we also love the Creator of all of the outdoors, and mm-hmm. uh, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, and He is the Lord. He is Lord of every dove, every duck, uh, every mm-hmm. person that you're ever going to meet. You know, He is the Lord of all those, and uh, and these guys are are super guys. And let me tell you, they're not just they're not just good at shooting shotguns. They're good at shooting bows and arrows and and rifles and all of that stuff and if you ever want to check them out uh pastor tim smith is at locust i always Grove. get church wrong Grove. 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 <laughs> let me tell you something folks let me tell you this is the this is something that we, we don't talk about a lot but i have a locust grove wine open i do i I tell you i've never used it but uh tim gave it to me because he said man some company sent our church a a a wine (laughs) corkscrew that's what the corkscrew well i've got a corkscrew that says locust road baptist church here chris here chris (laughs) uh, you know if you want to look up mark prudence you can check him out you know check out his youtube uh he is a world famous he's got 
he's got uh, calls, turkey calls all over the place, and uh, and some of the best turkey calls on the planet. And uh, oh yeah, so you need to check him out. And if you ever go to a to a show, you need to make sure that you look up Mark Pruden. But guys, I want to thank y'all for being on here with me today and putting up with me my whole life. I, I really appreciate that. You guys are are good friends, and and I love both of you. And um, and man, I hope you guys will come back on again. And I can't wait. Uh, to get over to Cadiz, Kentucky, where I can, uh, you know, where I can uh, I mean, shoot at a deer. I, Tim, mm -hmm. Tim Smith has put me on more deer, and I've wounded more deer in, in Cadiz, Craig <laughs> County than any other person on the planet. But uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll wound a couple more. But Mark, I'm going to be down to see you real soon when I come down to do uh, a little revival down at First Baptist Georgetown. And uh, mm. so I'm excited about that, too. All right. Thank you, guys. We're for looking you. forward to having you. Yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to have a good time. Well, folks, that's another wrap with the Bass Chaplain Fishing Podcast. I'm glad to be back out of the hospital. It was a Amen. hell of a week, but hopefully mm -hmm. we'll press on on the podcast where faith and fishing hook up.